Welcome to Accelerated Engineering. My name is John, and today I'm going to do a spreadsheet showcase for the heart rate tracker that I built. I will cover in three parts kind of what it does, some of the design challenges that came about as a part of building this tool, and how we solved the, uh, the problems that came about with this. I'm going to give a little bit of history about how um, or why I built it in the way that I did. So this is my first commissioned Excel spreadsheet, um, and it was commissioned by my wife. Wanted something to do uh, to give her a, a tracking device for her heart rate. She has a before and after an activity, and she was supposed to do this twice a day, once in the AM and once in the PM. And the data layout in days like this is the way that she specifically requested the data to be laid out. Um, obviously, from a uh, data entry perspective, this isn't the most efficient. And from trying to make Excel perform, this is not the most efficient way, but it is the way that she wanted to do it. So part of this, uh, is, it comes with the ability to change the start date and all of the dates cascade down. So that's a useful thing. Uh, also, as you see, it automatically puts data into this graph showing a before heart rate and an after heart rate. And in the blank one that I've got on the other sheet, or the almost blank one, you can see how it fills in data uh, as, as we enter it, like so. Uh, different data points can be entered in. And it also allows for skipping data points if there's uh, days that are missed. These are, okay, these are terrible heart rates. If your heart rate is like this, then go see a doctor. Anyway, that's that's how this works, and this is what this does. It's set up to be uh, easily, easily reused by keeping a blank version and then duplicating the sheet um, over to, well, duplicating the sheet. I'm just going to call this one June because I can, and then change the start date to uh, 2023-6 actual because that works. Okay, now let's look at some of the design challenges. Obviously, having data arranged in this manner uh, was, was not easy. Um, and in fact, most of this I had to do manually, although some of the um, some of the lines are formatted using conditional formatting. Uh, Excel doesn't like using many different line types or different colored lines with the conditional formatting, so I had to do that manually and then copy and paste all the way down. The first formula is typed in, and then the rest of them cascade down. And of course, this is a data entry tab, so all of the data has to tabulated and uh, entered by hand. So the way that I got around the problem of having uh, non-contiguous data was by having a separate calculation table, basically. If I unhide it here, kick the sheet off to the side, you can see that I've got it titled before and after and then all of the um, heart rates pulled and kind of congealed together into a single table, along with the dates. Uh, the dates are also listed over here. Whoops. Unhide. There we go. And that's not a particularly useful format. Let me just show these as a uh, date format. And let's use the same date format in all the places. Make this easy to talk about. There we go. Okay. And I'm going to blank this out just to show how this behaves. Okay. I think I actually don't need this anymore. Did I change this? Oh. Right. Let's see here. Nope. Okay. Never mind. That doesn't matter. So the way that this works is the AM and PM are just alternating. Uh, I did generate this using an equation, 
and then, or formula, pardon me, and then I used control C, control V, control for the special paste, and then just pasted the values all through here because it was quick and easy. The rest of these values in order to update, let's see if I'm pulling from where I think I, yeah, okay. I had an additional function here um, that was using that I didn't end up needing to implement. So this is just uh, pulling a date over. The really nifty bit is because I need two dates per, uh, or two entries per day, each of these is just taking the value above it and adding 0 0.5. And the reason that works is because Excel, when it calculates uh, dates or when it represents dates, uses a serial number. And when it is an even 0, 0 number, then it's an even date. I think that represents, off the top of my head, I think that represents midnight. 0.5 represents noon of the same day, but I can just add 0.5 to get up, up every half day. Uh, I think that makes that makes good sense. Now, on the other side, all the way over here, I've got dates and I've got it set up using a modulus function. So it what this function does is it takes the modulus of the row and the number four, because these repeat on a four row segment, and then if the modulus is zero, which means if the row is evenly divisible by four, it goes and pulls the date from the appropriate cell above it. For the next one, this one, the cell modulus equals one because five modulus four is one. It goes and pulls the value from C2. And by keeping those values uh, relative references, I always target the correct source. And so it always pulls the correct value from the uh, from the block that it's in. Now, because each of these blocks increments the day by one, the issue that I have is that these numbers are all uh, 0 0.00 values. They are all even days, or they represent like even incremental days. They represent midnight. These ones over here increment by fact by 0.5 every time. So what I needed to do, and this function does look a little bit ugly, but it's actually not too terribly complicated. Let me let me break this up a little bit. Um, because this is a let function, it works by using data pairs. Here we go. Break it up like this. So the first part of this let function, the first pass, takes a filter of everything in the before column. Now I'm only interested in numerical values and more specifically in this particular cell I want it only to reference the correct AM or PM and the correct date. Now I filter in a I so I'm filtering the C column. I'm filtering based on a condition in the B column which is where all my dates are and it must equal the date adjacent to this row of data, the, the data in row two. I have to use this round down function to the nearest zero digits or zero digits beyond the decimal point so that each one of these, for this cell, it goes and looks for five or four, five, zero, seven, eight, point zero, zero. But also this cell is gonna go look for four, five, zero, seven, eight, point zero, zero because it is rounded down. That was an important part. And then the additional filter by AM or PM ensures that this row of data can only pull information from this row of data. If I change that, I'll show that it performs exactly that way. Uh, 89, I give it a unique number. Let's go 111, because I don't think I've used that anywhere else. There we go. That's how that works. Um, the second pass just says if the value that you return is equal to zero, exchange it for an empty space instead. And if it's not equal to zero, then return the actual value that you got from the first pass. And then it returns the and then it returns the second pass altogether. So that gets one value. It does a proper lookup for the correct date. 
and for the AM and PM, and arranges all of my data in before and after columns all the way down. Now that I've got this data in a nice tab tabulated method, now I can use a chart to pull data. Now I can use this chart to pull data from the nicely tabulated results. Now this this would be completely impossible trying to do it from the um, from the existing data that comes in all of its blocks, but there we go. Um, an additional setting that I had to do, um, I will point out here, is that this table, come on, this table has an additional setting change, and it's in the hidden and empty cells. In hidden and empty cells, I had to change this tick box here to show data in hidden rows and columns, because if that box is not ticked, and I take all of my data and hide it, which is the way that I want to present it to look nice, my chart is just empty, and that's no good. So that was one of the uh, options that had to be toggled. Now, I think that covers all of the design challenges and, how, and the solutions for it in this chart. Other than that, it was a matter of formatting the chart nicely, um, adding some colored boxes in order to make it kind of look pretty, and then uh, a little, little bit of trial and error to make sure that everything um, worked and went together correctly. And so that concludes my my spreadsheet showcase for this little heart tra rate tracker. Um, I am going to upload a copy of this with a blank sheet uh, with the correct column hidden. I'm going to upload my uh, blank sheet and one sheet filled with pseudo data. There will be a link in the description to this video. Um, just consider liking and subscribing if you enjoyed this video. And if you watched it up to this point, then you probably did. So hit like, uh, consider subscribing, and I hope that you are having a great day. May all of your engineering be accelerated.